I had the opportunity to witness uh, service at another church here in Tulsa a couple weeks ago. And what I realized is uh, even I didn't appreciate fully what I have here at Going Hard for Christ Church. Our freedom to worship God the way that we do. Um, our freedom to be exposed and, and, and walk in our purpose. Um, and our pastor allows us to do that. So thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. At this time, if you would, please stand. And open up the word of God to Matthew chapter 26, verses 36 through 46. When you have it, say amen. And the word of God reads, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Father God, I just thank you for your word. God, I thank you for your spirit in this house right now, Lord. Oh, saturate this place, God. I thank you that right now, God, you're preparing the hearts of the people, God, to receive a word from you. Lord, I thank you that you bless us in this place tonight, Lord God, that you speak freely, God, that you move willingly, God. Let there be no restriction, no hindrances in this place, God. Oh, God, any, any demonic presences or spirits in this place, God, right now I demand that they flee in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you that you're feeding your sheep tonight. Oh, God, and that we rest in your presence. It is in your precious name that we pray. Amen. When I was in the military, we would do these exercises called FTXs or field training exercises. This training was conducted a minimum of two times per year. The purpose of this training was to prepare soldiers for war. This training taught us how to utilize our resources to accomplish our mission. And for each training, we had roughly 50 to 100 soldiers. And these soldiers were very valuable. Each soldier that attended this training was required to wear a helmet, a bulletproof vest, and have his or her weapon with them always. Because as a soldier, we understood that at any time, 
the enemy could attack us. Each day, as it was time for chow, our time to eat with one another, a total of roughly 10 soldiers were selected to pull what we call 360 degree security. These soldiers would form a 360 degree boundary around the treasures or the valuables of our camp. Our treasures included our higher leadership, our weapons, our communication devices, our food, and one another, plans and strategies which aided in accomplishing the mission, food, and our vehicles. The sole purpose of this 360 degree security was to deny the enemy access to our camp by establishing a boundary around the perimeter of our territory. Now, having had this experience, I'm better able to understand Christ's urgency as he prompted the disciples to be watchful as his betrayer was drawing near. Jesus was cautioning the disciples to guard, which is to protect or control, protect against damage or harm, their treasures, their valuables by defending their access, their point of entry. Jesus challenges the disciples in three ways, which inevitably reveal the disciples' preparedness to wage war against the incoming enemy. The first challenge, challenge number one, Christ first challenged the disciples' ability to be disciplined. In verse 36, it says, Then Jesus went to his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. If you could put point A on the screen. Christ says, Sit here while I go over there and pray. Point A. Oh. I didn't know what that meant. Sorry. Okay, point A is be still. Sit here while I go over there and pray. Be still. We live in a day and age where it has become increasingly difficult to sit still. This inability impairs our ability to hear from God. And when we fail to hear from God, we fail to heed to God. And that which we fail to heed, we fail to learn. Point B. In verse 38, if you'd like to, you can follow along with me. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. At this time, he was talking to Peter, James, and John. He says, sit here and keep watch with me. And in the military, we call this the head on the swivel, right? So as we're pulling this 360 degree security, our head is constantly moving so that we can be sure to see the enemy. We're scanning our territory to make sure that the enemy isn't advancing us from the left, from the front, or from the right. Jesus is saying, be fixed in this one place while yet being observant of your surroundings. I'm inclined to believe that some of us are in a position in the positions that we are dealing with hurts and pains and different damages because we failed to sit still and we failed to observe. And I can say for myself, one of the things that I struggled with as a young woman coming up was men. I struggled with men. Uh, I just struggled. And 
when I was reading the word of God, what he was showing me was that in those times, some of the heartbreak that I have, it came from me failing to sit still and observe. I didn't pay attention when he was cursing. I didn't pay attention when he was talking crazy about his mama. I wasn't paying attention when he had a broken relationship with his father. I failed to sit still and observe. See, I got caught up in the, oh, he fine. <laughs> he cute. Discipline makes the difference between a man or woman losing their life or them gaining it. The second challenge that Christ had for the disciples was to be conscious. Point A, be aware. In verse 41, he says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus says, watch, so be steadily attentive. I find it interesting that it's in this passage, uh, in this same, uh, earlier in the chapter, yeah, earlier in the chapter, verses 17 through hmm, 30. Jesus was eating the Last Supper with the disciples. And so now Jesus is saying, be steadily attentive as you watch and you pray, be steadily attentive. And Jesus was sitting at the table uh, the Last Supper, and there was Judas. Jesus was attentive that his betrayer, his enemy, was right before him. And some of us, because we're not aware, are sitting and we're eating with enemies, and we're unconscious. Jesus modeled that fundamental practice before the disciples that they would be a witness. Point B, be engaged. We're talking about consciousness now. So point A is be aware. Point B is be engaged. Verse 41 again. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. To pray is to ask earnest, earnestly. And what is it exactly that you think that Jesus was teaching the disciples to ask earnestly for? Well, in verses 39 and 42, he tells us. He says, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. In verse 42, my father, if it's not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. Jesus demonstrated a concentrated position for the father's will to be completed in and through him. Point C. Be alert. In verse 43, when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. Jesus is saying, are you still sleeping and resting? He's challenging the disciples to be quick to perceive and to act. So our ability to be conscious influences our capability to deny the enemy access to our treasures. Our consciousness is only effective in helping us be on guard if we are aware, engaged, and alert. And as I was studying this, God was showing me like a formula, aware, 
engaged, and alert. And if at any point, any one piece of that formula is out of place, the entire formula becomes ineffective. The enemy is looking for a point of entry so he can siphon our dreams, our purpose, our desires, our passion, our effectiveness, our productivity, our relationships. The enemy is looking for a point of entry. So it's important that we be conscious in guarding our treasures. Did I forget to tell y'all the title? I'm sorry. The title is Guarding Your Treasure. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> so whether it be on the job or in the church or in our homes, the enemy desires for you and I to be unconscious. He watches as the cares and anxieties of this world lull us to sleep. And that happened to me when I was a young girl. See, I thought that I just hadn't been trained about men. But praise God, my father's here tonight. I didn't realize that it stemmed from me not having a relationship with him. See, all I was really looking for was affirmation. All I was really looking for was love. And the enemy, time and time again, I was defeated. I was defeated. I had no, I had nothing at the front line to guard my access, access to me, my anointing. I had nothing to defend me. As the enemy lulls us to sleep, he and all his demons come in and steal our stuff. We have got to be conscious. Christ's final challenge, what I also struggled with as a young girl, was being active. His final challenge to the disciples was to be active. In verse 45, the word of God says, Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look! Point A. Christ is telling us to see. In other words, direct your attention where the enemy is gaining ground. He's saying, see, wake up, be alert, be on guard, be engaged with me. The hour has come. Hmm. C. Point B. He says, get up. In verse 46, he says, rise. Get up. We don't have time anymore. You have got to get up from where you have been fixed and get engaged. Point C. The word, point C, move. In verse 46, he, after he says rise, he says, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus says, let us go. It's time to move. It's time to get active. If you're going to guard your treasure, you have got to get in the mindset that you are in a defensive position. Because what we know is that the enemy comes not to give life, but to take it from you. He's coming to steal your joy, kill your momentum, and to destroy your passion. 
Jesus is saying to the disciples, I've got to get you up and moving because if I don't, you're going to sleep your way right into the hands of the enemy. Jesus was cautioning the disciples to guard, which is to control and protect, protect against damage or harm, their treasures, their valuables, by defending their access, their point of entry. He says, see, get up and move. Well, that's the end of my sermon, but... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So as I was reading the scripture, and this just happened today, uh, and I was like, no, God. But then we went into prayer, and pastor said, be you, daughter, be you. And so I said, okay, okay, God, I'm going to be me. But as I was reading the scripture, I started to think about the disciples and I thought to myself how the story may have been different if just one would have said, be alert, wake up, be on guard. And I started to see the body of Christ. And we've got to wake one another up. We've got some brothers and sisters that are sitting next to us and they've been lulled to sleep. The absence of accountability will keep you where you are. In my trouble with men, I thought I could do what I wanted to do. This is all fun. Yeah, I can go to the movies with you. Yeah, we can hang out. I ain't got to tell nobody. I don't need nobody to check in what time I'm getting to the house. I'm grown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Christ challenged the disciples' ability to be disciplined, conscious and active and again if at any point one of these is out of place the formula doesn't work if at any point one of the members of the body is out of place it doesn't work so when we say we need one another I'm starting to get I'm starting to get an understanding of what that means I've always wanted to be isolated and by myself. <laughs> but I tell you, when Pastor Sharon went over there and she started to intercede for me, I realized how much I needed her. I had to draw from her strength, you see. I need you to survive. I can't do it without you. And if you leave me to myself, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to sleep. I need you. Because I've got treasure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've got treasure. I've got treasure and I need help guarding it. You've got some treasure and you need help guarding it. Jesus. Jesus. He's dealing with me about this access, you see. Access. And the enemy, over time, he was just gaining ground. He was gaining ground. He was picking up momentum, and I didn't see him. My head wasn't on a swivel, you see. My head was like way over here. He over here. <laughs> and before I knew it, he had attached himself to me, and I couldn't get him out. I couldn't get him out. Discipline, conscious, and active. These three are strategies. God gave us strategies. That's why I love the word of God. See, when we're talking about boundaries, the word of God is a boundary that protects me. Yeah. Yeah. 
God gave me a strategy on how to guard myself, one that I didn't have before. And if I didn't read my word, I still wouldn't have it. Strategies for protecting your points of entry, your mind, your heart, your spirit, your anointing, your purpose, your mission, all treasures that must be guarded. I was giving stuff away. Just giving it away. You ain't have to have no passcode. <laughs> you just come in and get it. An open door. Hmm. An open door. The amount of effort that it takes. It was easy for me when I was in the military. Because, see, they conditioned my mind. They said, every day you need to be here at 6 o'clock. You need to be here at 9 o'clock. Be here at 12 o'clock. Be here at 1. Be here at 5. Every day, and we had to be in formation. It had to be dress right dress. Could nobody be out of order. Nobody out of order. We had battle buddies. Our battle buddies were our accountability. And it was with the help of the battle buddy that helped me stay alert and vigilant. See, in AIT, we couldn't go anywhere without a battle buddy. We couldn't even walk down the street without a battle buddy. If you got caught without a battle buddy, you was in trouble. But nowadays, we just walking around. Just open targets. And I've heard pastors say so many times, sons and daughters being picked off. And I get it now. I get it now. One by one. And we look around, and I'm sure some of us, we can see there's some people that ain't here. But each of us is here for a reason. God's perfect will and his perfect plan. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Such a blessing to see our father, my friend, brother, brother Mark is here. My God, in attendance is such a blessing. You may be seated. I won't be long. My God, let's come on. Let's give the daughter one more hand. One more hand. Amen. Amen. So good. She's been found faithful. I'm just having a talk with her and Pastor Madeline uh, in the back. Uh, uh, kind of bringing Pastor Madeline and even Laquetta up to speed and how she made it to stand behind this pulpit on a Wednesday. There was a series of events that she had to submit to. There's a series of challenges uh, that I required, and there are some things that had to shift in order for you to be up here on this pulpit, and she has met those requirements. But then I began to teach the young soldier that this exposure brings major persecution. Some will say Hosanna, and some will say crucify. Some of the same ones was that say Hosanna or turn around two days later and say, Crucify. Leadership, and it's sad what I'm about to say, inside the four walls of any church. It's sad that the people that God has 
connected us to as a local body that when God is strategically moving a person deeper into what God has called them to do, and they decide to get active, they decide to move, they decide to be conscious, they decide to be alert. All of those points and sub points that my daughter gave us, when you begin to see someone move and activate those points, it can bring jealousy from the same people that said, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Mm. So, ask yourself tonight, I'm looking over her, but the access is over her. So as she was ministering, I told her, don't try to preach, just teach, and exactly what she did. Ask yourself, where is your point of access that you are giving? You are giving, not the devil. You are giving the enemy. Where's the point of access in our lives, our lives? Is our head on the wrong swivel? Are we focused and are we alert? Because you could be all those on the wrong thing. You can be active. You can be moving. Come on. You can be conscious. All in the wrong direction. So I tell you, you got to have laser focus when you're walking with God because there's major warfare when you decide to come, Peter. And step out of the boat and move to another level in your life. And then she said something that you and I caught. I hope you did. You have to even be conscious in your own home. Because a lot of the access that is in our life, my God, that's unhealthy, is in our homes. What is, this, what is the movie? Are you sleeping with the enemy? I'm not talking about literally sleeping with the enemy. Are you eating with the enemy? Are you talking to the enemy? Are you corresponding via social media with the enemy? Have you befriended somebody that you ain't never put your eyes on and you can't wait to go home and talk to them by way of social media? Is it possible that can be, my God, an enemy? That has rocked you because your emotions is unhealthy. You need affirmation. You need some form of companionship. You have convinced yourself, my God, that I ain't seeing him. I ain't, I ain't, so therefore, it's, it's okay. But, my God, the access is that now you are getting a soul time. Well, y'all know y'all pastor could take and preach on anything. Fool of God. But I'm not going to do that. I thank God that I'm settled and growing in my calling, Pastor Tedrick. This is part of a training facility. As I told y'all as we closed out last night in prayer, that many people, not many people, let me be careful, that it's exciting for me to watch you become and develop into what God has called you to do. It's exciting. And so no matter how far, no matter how much this church grow, because it's getting ready to do some things, trust me, I told y'all, during the consecration, the clip is for the comeback. As I stopped, Minister Q, Pastor Madeline, and Pastor Champ, on our way, standing outside the door, According to Ephesians, I mean Matthew, I'm bringing it in. According to Matthew, God showed me the one you're reading. See, God know how to wink at you. He know how to let you know that uh, you made the right decision. You, 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 you in the river. My hands is on it. Mm -hmm. Matthew 15, write this down. 1513, reading from the New Living, it says, Jesus replied, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and read it, Matthew 1513, Jesus replied, not Matthew, even though it's in his book, 
But Jesus replied, every plant not planted by my heavenly father will be uprooted. Those that's planted can't be uprooted. Because when God plants you, you can't go nowhere. Even when you try, you can't go nowhere. Watch this. Catch the revelation. Even when you have already tried to shift in your mind, but for some reason your body keep ending up here at 1 and 7 o'clock on. It's beautiful seeing you grow, people of God, in the things of God. I want to encourage you to continue to do what I've always been saying across this pulpit. Get active. Wake up. Be alert. Stay focused. Get involved. Let the king, heaven, recognize you like Potiphar did to Joseph because Joseph was serving in the house. Greeters meeting coming up at the church. If that's an area that you would like to start in, because you don't know where you need to be at, that's okay. But that's something that you can do, ladies, because there's more ladies in the church than there's men. And I love how, Crystal, let me see it off an envelope, how you had it. Just, just give me an offering envelope. Somebody, they took them. Let me see that piece of paper right here. This was real beautiful how she was standing right here with an offering envelope. Not because we asked her for money, but just she was holding her post cue. She was active. She was conscious. She was alert. She was on the swivel. See, when you're sensitive to God, the Spirit of God said, don't worry about to say when the time come, I'll say it for you. Everything that y'all hearing, Shemaine, is coming from the Spirit because my spirit is alive because I spend time with God every single day. And so I could take that same message and give you principles, my God, to affect your life. She was active. She was conscious. She was aware. She was alert. She guarded her entry, her access. The enemy, she couldn't get caught slipping because she was focused. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, some of you, that's beautiful. You look real good on Sundays and Wednesdays. You come in and grab your favorite seat and you sit down and you're faithful to the ministry. And I love that. But are you active? As I told y'all, when God strategically put a body of Christ together, it's because the gifts and purpose and the talents that's on the inside of you fit for however long that season is. That's why it's incumbent upon you to begin and say, God, show me. But sometimes God won't show you what some of your gifts and talents is. You have to stumble up on. You have to stumble. That means you got to try stuff. Peter stumbled <laughs> as he got out the boat and as he began to walk on water. He was willing to try. Are you willing to try something? Well, I don't like people looking at me when I... Well, when you... <laughs> You sure will be dressed cute enough for somebody to look at you. So what, 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 why are you dressing all cute? Ain't nobody look at you. So you mean tell me you, you ain't got that much confidence as a woman to stand here and serve God's people? You know why you disqualify yourself? Because you focus on people and not on serving God's people. You looking at them. How them people looking at me? Yeah, people vote on you. Well, she should have turned. Man, she should have. Her hair need be. Her clothes. <laughs> I didn't try to discourage you. I'm just telling you the truth. Everybody can't handle leadership. To my men, we only have a few of the army, but we got our head on the swivel. We do what we got to do to get it done. I want you to know that I'm very proud of all of you. I thank God. For the ministry. I thank God for what he's doing. 
exciting, exciting, exciting things is on the horizon, not 18 months from now, months from now. I'm just excited. I want you to know that I'm proud of you. One more thing she said. When she was in the service, you couldn't be walking down the street or go nowhere without your battle buddy. The access that the enemy was getting in the woman of God's life because she had no accountability to ward off the access of the enemy. Many of us, though I just said I love you, I'm proud of you, I'm glad you're faithful, you're giving the enemy too much access in your life. The Bible says, how can two people walk together except there be agreement? When Jesus sent the disciples out, if you read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he sent them out by two. Never in the Bible do you ever see a disciple being sent out on a mission by himself. The Bible says if one fall in a ditch, pity the man that falls by himself. But if a person fall in a ditch, come on somebody, and he got somebody with him, pastor, you'll be there to pick them up. It's all type of principles in the word of God for us to win this battle and to guard. Because really, when you have two, I'm looking this way, and that person is looking that way. And our head is on a swivel this way. So we got... We got the left and the right guarded, but we got each other's back. Who got your back? Is it possible, Stacy? just because I looked at you, that we got the wrong people guarding our backs? See, one thing about a shepherd that has been assigned, Pastor, to sheep, if you got a true shepherd's heart, when the wolf come, when the bear come, when the lion come, a true shepherd ain't going to run off and leave his sheep. But if you've been hired and I done paid you, when the wolf come, the bear come, the lion come, you're going to think about, I got to save my life. I'm not going to think about trying to save the sheep's life. The Bible also says that when David left to go check on his brothers, the Bible says, preacher, that David left the sheep with another shepherd. He didn't leave the sheep with somebody that was hired because David knew that this hired man is not going to love and take care of the sheep because he don't have a shepherd's heart. <laughs> Principle. Let's stand. As Minister George didn't play lightly, if you have never given your life to Christ, and I don't know how many first-time guests we have here, and you don't have to have a lot of hooping and hollering and so forth for a good word. As her father leaned over and said, the word of God does not return void. And God can accomplish something in five minutes <laughs> that a pastor that's in the flesh trying to preach for two hours and couldn't accomplish. Whatever your head bow, I want to just make sure. If you have never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you're ready to get active in God's kingdom. You're ready to be conscious and focused. And you want to give your life to Christ, if that's you, just raise your hand. Let us lead you to Christ tonight. Let the, as, let the beginning, we call it just the beginning of your life. My God, now go ahead. Come on down, woman of God. Come on down. Bring on down, Mother Cynthia, right behind you. Bring her down. My God. Mm. My God. If you, if it's somebody else that want to give their life to Christ, you could be a man or you could be a woman. One thing I love about our men, real men, serve God are going over Christ church. Yeah, yeah. Is that anybody? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? If you are here tonight and you ain't active and you're ready to get active. I'm not talking about active for us being a greeter or being a porter or serving in the ministry. That you're ready to get active for God. And you can't be active for God if you're not properly planted in the kingdom of God. Come on down, woman of God. I know you came Sunday, but now you're ready to get active. Who might be else? Amen. Thank you, Jenna. We're talking about getting active. 
Active, active. Thank you, Lord. Active, active, active. Any men, you're not active. You come to church, but you ain't doing nothing. You ready to get plugged in? We need a whole lot of help. I, I get tired sometimes of watching Pastor Chapel who had hip replacement have to walk around and limp around because the people that sit here won't let him sit down. And some of that his fault because he don't want to sit down because he got to make sure his pastor in his church is taken care of because he truly helped me pastor this church. But if you are here, men or anybody else, that you want to get active in God, and when you get active in God, that means you get active in his kingdom. If that's you, man, come on. We still on good time. I got three minutes and I got a meeting. My God. Anybody? 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 Amen. So we just going to pray. I like to use the gifts in the house. So I was telling my daughter, uh, when God bring to your church, gifts and resources. And if you don't use them, them same gifts that God has brought to the ministry to enhance the ministry and help the ministry, if they're not being used, they'll get up and walk right on out. And then you and I, I will get to complain and say, God, you're not sending me what I need. God said, yes, I did. You just ain't using them. You too much trying to haul the microphone. You too intimidated about somebody stealing your church. Are you with me so far? And so therefore, when you're not in the pool pit, instead of you preaching, you let the video preach. When you got preachers that I sent to alleviate the stress of preaching every Sunday and every Wednesday. Use what I gave you. Why am I using the church? I'm trying to tell you, you have tools and weapons and stuff in your hand, but you're not using it. God specifically gave you spiritual weapons. One of them is called faith. The other one is called patience. The other one is called discipline. The other one is called prayer. So you got them as weapons, church. <laughs> That God has given you and I to ward off the enemy. Come on, somebody. I thank God. So, Minister Margaret, go ahead and first lead the woman of God in prayer. This one right here. It says she want to give her life to Christ with tears running down her eyes. I pray that salvation come today to somebody. When I was in the back, Pastor praying. And salvation has come. And I give God the glory for that. Because the heavens is rejoicing. Over the one soul. That has come. To give their life to Christ. Why mother's getting ready to deal with her. For those that understand the system and the heartbeat of the ministry just pray stretch your hands towards the woman of God and we're going to pray for those that is coming ready to get active and then I'm going to release y'all I won't labor the time but if you're interested in becoming active and you want to be a greeter it's a good place to start right there Oh my God, if you just want to know more about the ministries, you can also go to that greeter minute meeting because we can tell you all about what's going on in the church. The church needs you, especially where we're headed in life. In the future, we need you. And so while she's praying and leading her to Christ, those that has come to be active, I'm going to enter into an agreement and pray that God continue to prepare you and show you strategically where he wants you planted at my God. So Father God, I just thank you for those that's come to be active and be reconciled, first of all, back to the King and the King of Kings. I thank you, Father God, for the willingness, Father God, to get out the boat and come forth. Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. And Peter got out the boat and began to walk on water. These, Father God, has come. 
They has heard the clarion call, Father God, my God, from the under shepherd to God. And so now they are standing here, Lord. I'm asking, Father God, first of all, that you forgive, cleanse, and wash us all from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet, Lord. Mm. I pray for this decision, Father God, to be active, Father God, in your kingdom, Lord, that it propels them on to their next, Father God, that you help them to discover all of the gifts, their talents, and the resources that's laying dormant inside of their soul, Father God. I thank you for sending willing help, Father God, people that's willing to get involved in the ministry, Father God, so the faithful fruit, Father God, can be able to come and enjoy the ministry like they get to enjoy the ministry. Lord, thank you. Father God, what you call for, you always provide for, Father God. So I thank you for these, Lord. I speak blessings upon them. I speak blessings. I speak healing, emotional healing, mental healing, Father God, any physical healing that they may need, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you begin to show these, Father God, that's willing to get active, Father God, any access, Father God, where they may be given the enemy in their lives, Father God, so as they move forward, Father God, of serving inside the house of the Lord, they won't become disqualified, Lord, because of an unhealthy private life, Father God. I'm praying that we, none of us, become public successes and private failures, Father God, so clean us all up from the inside out, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for planning Sister Jackie and Sister Janet them into this ministry, Father God. Oh my God, I thank you, Father God, for these new souls, Lord, that is now, Lord, beginning to serve in the kingdom, Father God, of heaven and going off for Christ Church, Lord. Ah, Father God, now bless the body of Christ as we prepare to release, Father God. Bless Mama, uh, Mama Donna's uh, greeters meeting, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I pray your traveling mercy over each and every person, Father God, under the sound of my voice. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Father God, that we have dedicated the first 21 days to you, Lord. Mm. Now multiply, Father God, the next 11 months of this year. Do, Father God, the supernatural. After the consecration, Lord, now let the miracles begin to unfold. Oh, uh, my God, let the blessings begin to reign. <laughs> oh, my God, do it so that you may get the glory. <laughs> oh, Isaiah 41 and 20, that the people may see and know and understand that the Lord, hand of the Lord has done this, Father. So, Lord, we thank you now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen.